morning, one and all. I shall not see the now. Today, as per schedule, today our topic is practical chats, technical problems. Please write down in your card. Otherwise, of course, note down these problems. After you copy it in the card book and then you will tell the date you have to submit the record books. So clinical problems. This, uh, this clinical problems will be given in the exam as a four marks in flat books. Four marks. One question will be given from out of these 13 problems. This carries four marks. Please write down. If a patient is brought to the casualty, first problem. If a patient is brought to the casualty, the following signs and symptoms. If a patient is brought to the casualty, the following signs and symptoms. Unconsciousness, stupor, Neighbor respiration, fall of blood pressure, low pulse rate, visual disturbances, including clear effect, diminished vision, blindness, cold skin, pupils not reacting to light, and a history of consumption of spurious liquor. The questions for this A. What could be the liquor consuming or consumed that gave rise to the above signs and symptoms? Another big question, what is the line of treatment of the same? C question, explain the rational of the treatment. The answers for this question, First question, A, history of consumption of spurious liquor could be retail alcohol, signs and symptoms, unconsciousness, labor, labor respiration, fall of blood pressure, low pulse rate, visual disturbances, including clear effect. Immunization, vision, blindness, cold skin, pupils not reacting to light are suggestive of methyl alcohol poisoning. Methyl alcohol poisoning. These symptoms like visual disturbances including clear effect. Diminished vision, blindness, cold skin, pupils not reacting to light are due to formic acid. Formic acid. Forming acid, a toxic product formed due to metabolites of methyl alcohol, which is a formic acid due to formic acid. This is a metabolite of methyl alcohol, suggest to of Methyl alcohol poisoning. The 
formal D and formal as a result of formal as a result of metabolism of methyl alcohol reacts rapidly with retinal proteins causing retinal damage. Causing retinal damage. So it is metabolized, it's formal DNA, mainly causing the retinal damage. Formic acid causes acidosis and tissue damage. Unconsciousness, stupor, labor respiration, fall of blood pressure, low pulse rate. Low pulse rate. The low W, sorry. Low pulse rate are due to central nervous system collapse. Central nervous system collapse, respiratory, and also circulatory collapse. This is mainly due to the methyl alcohol poisoning. Then how it is metabolized, a toxic product that is formic acid, causing all these signs and symptoms. Mainly the formaldehyde, causing the retinal damage. Remember this important retinal damage. Coming to the let B question, answer is the. How is the treatment, line of treatment? Ethanol is administered through a for methyl alcohol poisoning is the treatment, ethanol. Ethanol is administered through a nasal gastric tube in a loading dose of points seven ml per kg followed by point one five mg per kg drip treatment has to be continued for several days until no methanol is detectable in the blood the main antidote is the methyl alcohol is the ethanol. This has to be done along with hemodialysis to enhance the removal of methanol and its toxic products. One more treatment, folinic acid. Folinic acid, 30 milligrams intravenous, six to eight hourly, may protect against retinal damage. This is a folinic acid, 30 milligrams. Protect against retinal damage by enhancing acid metabolism it's oxidation to CO2. Then one more treatment. Farmipazole is a drug. Farmipazole. A competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase is also effective with less cerebral depression. Then one more drug, sodium bicarbonate. This is for to correct the, correct the acidosis. Sodium bicarbonate is given by 
intravenous infusion to correct acidosis and thus to prevent retinal damage. Its infusion should continue till acidosis is corrected because the patient may show relapse. If bicarbonate admission is discontinued soon. Then what are the other supportive measures? These are other supportive measures. Protection of eyes from light by keeping the patient in a dark room. Then respiratory support should be given that is by giving the oxygen if needed. You have to maintain the airway. Then gastric lavage should be done if any products are there. Gastric lavage. This is the line of treatment of methyl alcohol poisoning. Then what is the rational of treatment? That C point answer rational of treatment is as ethanol as higher affinity then methanol for alcohol dehydration is an enzyme. This is the mechanism of action. How ethanol will act. An enzyme responsible for methanol oxidation to formaldehyde in the liver. Ethanol 100 milligrams but decibel in Blood saturates alcohol dehydrogenase and thus retards the metabolism of methanol to formic acid. This is the ethanol how we react. Retards the metabolism of methanol to formic acid. This completes the First question, first problem. Okay. <coughs> we'll come into the second question. A woman aged second question. A woman aged sixteen years. is a known epileptic and is under ferritin therapy for four years. She is receiving oral contraceptive pills for the past six months. and are having regular menstrual cycles. But during the recent past, she has no monthly period. Even after continuation of oral contraceptives. That is, she is under treatment for four years under anti epileptic therapy. She is also receiving the oral contraception for the past six months for contraception. Check questions. A. What could be reason for the absence of regular monthly period? Question B, explain the mechanism for this clinical analogy.
these all will be given in a chart form. Charts, there will be given charts in the practical. Okay. See, in the prevailing situation, what are the better contraceptive methods? In the prevailing situation, what are the better contraceptive methods? Coming to the answers. First A answer, pregnancy could be the reason for the Pregnancy could be the reason for the absence of regular monthly periods. Pregnancy. Then how, what is the B answer? What is the cause for that pregnancy? Phenytoin being an enzyme inducer. Enzyme inducer. Increase the metabolism of oral contraceptive pills and thus nullifies its effect leading to leading to failure of oral contraceptive pills and this pregnancy in this condition due to this phenytoin is an enzyme inducer so it nullifies the effect of oral contraceptives the leading to the pregnancy. C answer. In the prevailing situation, the better contraceptive method is a barrier methods like condoms or cervical caps or IU series, intra-ident concepted device like cut. Copper tea. I use it is like copper tea. These are all the better methods for contraception. Okay. Main important in this is phenytoin is an enzyme inducer. You have to remember that. Enzyme inducer. Coming to the third one, third question. Third question, a myasthenic patient, myasthenic patient is receiving a standard anti cholinesterol drug, anti cholinesterol drug, and over a period of time, there was worsening of the symptoms. Questions. What could be the reason for worsening of the symptoms? B, B question. How do you elicit the reason for worsening of the symptoms? C question. What is the follow-up action you suggest? D question. What are the other drugs available for myasthenia gravis? These are the questions. A third problem. What are the other drugs available for myasthenia gravis? Okay, we move on to the answer. What are the answers? Answers first A. After prolonged treatment with anticholinesterol drugs, the patient's condition may swing between may swing between myasthenic crisis. This is due to therapeutic failure 
as a consequence of low doses. Or cholinergic crisis. Is it due to toxicity due to over treatment of higher doses? Either it may be a bystander crisis or cholinergic crisis. Both the conditions would end up in muscular weakness. If the condition worsens, we answer the muscular weakness is due to the overdosing with neostigmin. That is cholinergic crisis. That is due to overdosing of the neostigmin. Then the dose of neostigmin has to be reduced on the contrary on the contrary if the condition of the patient improves the muscle weakness is due to myasthenic crisis that is the patient if the condition improves it is due to the myasthenic crisis this is due to low dosing, under dosing of the neostigmin has to be increased. You see, this is the condition. Then, what is the treatment? The C answer a short acting anticholinergic drug. The drug is the hydrophonium. Hydrophonium. 1 to 2 milligrams intravenous is given along with respiratory support. The D answer. What are the other drugs used? Are? The drugs are glucocorticoids, that is prednisolone, immunosuppressants. Zathioprin and cyclosporin. Zathioprin and cyclosporin. These are all the answers. Okay. The drugs are other drugs are glucocorticoids, immunosuppressants. The drug of choice is a what to give short acting atrophonium. One to two milligrams intravenous. Okay, we will we'll move on to the next question. This is a patient is brought to the casualty. A patient is brought to the casualty with the following signs and symptoms. Decrease the spread rate. Meiosis, muscle twitching, fasciculations, increase of the secretions, diarrhea, and convulsions with loss of consciousness. The questions A. What could be the drug that can produce the above signs and symptoms? And how does it occur? And B question Outline the treatment of the above clinical condition. You see this, this muscle twitching, fasciculations, increase of secretions, diarrhea, and convulsions. 
Meiosis is there. Okay? The more to the answer. A. The above signs and symptoms suggest. The above signs and symptoms suggest parasympathetic overactivity. Excessive cholinergic activity. Which could be due to organophosphorus compound poisoning. This poisoning may occur by accidental, accidental suicidal, which are irreversible cholinesterase inhibitors. So there is an increased concentration of acetylcholine at both nicotinic and muscarinic receptors causing excessive stimulation of these receptors producing the above signs and symptoms. This is mainly due to the argonophosphorus compound poisoning. It occurred due to as an accidental suicidal. So there is an increased concentration of acetylcholine. This is a parasympathetic. Then coming to the treatment. Treatment of the above clinical condition. The treatment we should give that to decrease the further exposure to organophosphorus compound by removing the soiled cloth and washing the soiled skin and eyes with soap and water. First we have to take these precautions. We have to remove the cloth and then we have to clean the skin and and ice with soap and water. Then doing gastric lavage with activated charcoal. This is by 50 to 100 grams in 300 to 800 ml of water. Support to measures like maintaining respiratory pathway, that is the airway pathway, giving artificial Respiration by removal of secretions in the respiratory tract and giving oxygen administration. This is the convulsions, control of convulsions with daisy palm 5 to 10 milligrams intravenous, repeated every 20 to 30 minutes until the convulsions get prevented. Daisy palm. Then one more drug, main, that is the antidote for acetylcholine, that is the atropine sulfate. This is the important atropine sulfate. 2 to 4 milligrams intravenously, repeated every 5 to 10 minutes with the 2 milligrams dose up to a maximum dose of 50 milligrams. That is until full atropination. Because there is a meiosis to the atropine, you have to, for, to dilate the pupil until full atropination. And muscular symptoms disappear. Then this is followed by 1 to 2 grams. You see this one. Atropine sulfate, 2 to 4 milligrams. This is 1 to 2 grams of pralidoxin. Pralidoxin. By slow intravenous injection to reactivate and regenerate the acetylcholine esterase enzyme. 
This is the main two drugs, atropine sulfate and pralidoxin. Atropine is in milligrams, pralidoxin is in grams, one to two grams. This administration of pralidoxin prior to atropine results in increased muscle, muscle weakness. This is the line of treatment for organophosphorus poisoning. Very, very important. Okay. We'll move on to the next. Fifth question. A patient with acute lymphatic leukemia is put on mercaptopurin and over a period. Mercaptopurin and over a period, he developed painful swollen. This is the mercaptopurin. Sorry, this is C. Mercaptopurin. Swollen small joints of fingers and toes. Questions were A. What could be the reason for such a late development? B. How can you prevent the development of the same? The answers were the mercaptopurin is a purine analog metabolized by xanthin oxidase to 6 thiouric acid. 6 thiouric acid by xanthin oxidase. Apart from this, because of its tumor lysis, also. There is an increase in production of purines which again get metabolized by xanthine oxidase to uric acid. Uric acid. Both these effects together gives rise to hyperuricemia. This excessive uric acid gets deposited in, in soft tissues, resulting in painful swollen joints of toes and fingers, which results in gout. There's an increase in uric acid levels. That is the leading to the condition gout. <coughs> then how will you treatment for this gout? B answer by giving. Xanthine oxidase inhibitors like allopurinol, <coughs> allopurinol and febustat. Febustat, which prevent the formation of uric acid. And does the prevent the development of hyperuricemia in this condition? You have to give xanthine oxygen inhibitors like allopurinol and febustat. Febustat, okay? You can give this in oral form. This is the treatment for gout. Then we have to move on to the next sixth problem. Please note down. A patient is given primarpin. Primarpin for the radical cure of Plasmodium vivax malaria. And he developed hemolytic anemia. And also methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia. Hemolytic anemia and methemoglobinemia. There are a lot of questions. A. What could be the reason for such a development? 
then what are the other examples that may cause similar condition? What are the other examples that may cause similar condition? Okay. So answer is a, a primaquine is an anti-malarial drug. Used for so this is a radical cure of radical cure of plasmodium vivax malaria. It causes intravascular hemolysis and methemoglobinemia, especially in patients with this is important, especially in patients with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. And this is due to this is an account of low concentration of NADPH. <coughs> low concentration of NADPH, which normally reduces with hemoglobin to hemoglobin. With hemoglobin to hemoglobin. This NADPH also helps in the production of glutathione reduct reductase. As a result of reduction of NADPH levels, there is a decreased level of reduced form of glutathione, which normally is necessary for prevention of oxidative stress of RBC. Thus, decreased in APH results in production of methemoglobin and intravascular hemolysis causing hemolytic anemia, intravascular hemolysis. <coughs> the B answer. <clears throat> the treatment is this. we can do other drugs like sulfonamides, quinine, salicylates, dapsone, nitrofrazole. What are the other drugs cause this condition? Sulfonamides, quinine, salicylates, dapsone, nitrofrazole will cause hemolytic anemias. And methemoglobinia in glucose 6-phosphate deficient subjects are patients. What are the other drugs causing this condition? Hemolytic anemia and methemoglobinia. That is the sulfonamide screening, salicylates, dapsone, nitrofrazole. Okay. We'll move on to the next seventh problem. <coughs> Seventh problem, a patient aged 70 years and suffering from chronic congestive heart failure, chronic congestive heart failure is receiving digoxin for the past few months. He is also receiving furosemide as an adjuvant treatment. Gradually, he developed ventricular ectopics, muscle weakness, and cramps in the legs. Then, what are the questions for him? Yeah. What could be the reason for such a development? What could be the reason for such a development? B question, how do you manage such a situation? How do you manage such a situation? Okay.
The answer is Jokes is a cardiac glycoside. Indicated in congestive heart failure. It has very low margin of safety and high toxicity. Desoxy toxicity is manifested as ventricular arrhythmias in the presence of hypokalemia. That is low levels of potassium in the body. Hypokalemia. Ventricular arrhythmias and hypokalemia. Already the patient is also on furosemide, a loop diuretic, which is indicated in congestive heart failure. This is the furosemide having a pro property of reducing the concentration of potassium level along with the main effect of natriuresis. When both these drugs are combined, hypokalemia is enhanced, that is increased. Thus, dissolution toxin gets aggravated, manifesting as weakness and cramps in the legs. This is mainly due to the hypokalemia and development of ventricular ectopics. Ventricular ectopics. Coming to the B answer, the treatment part is the how you treat, manage the situation. Furosemide should be withdrawn immediately. And its potassium levels and ECG should be monitored. ECG for the ventricular ectopics. Then potassium level should be monitored. Then we have to give the treatment. Parental potassium supplements should be advocated if necessary. Then to control the ventricular ectopics, lignocaine intravenous is given as antiarrhythmic drug. Potassium, we have to give potassium supplements and lignocaine. This furosemide is replaced by potassium sparing diuretics like spironolactone. You have to replace it with potassium sparing diuretics, spironolactone. Coming to the eighth, eighth problem. Your drug has a hepatic extraction ratio. Hepatic extraction ratio, the ER extraction ratio of 0.6 and 40% absorbed from the gut. It's the hepatic extraction ratio. This is the problem. Questions are A, find out the bioavailability of this drug. Then B, define bioavailability of your drug. You have to define that bioavailability. What is bioavailability? Okay. The answer is answer, sir, is the problem. Bioavailability F, F is equal to small f in bracket one minus extraction ratio minus ER. Where F is the capital F is the biology of the drug, small f is the fraction absorbed from the gut. Here is the hepatic extraction ratio. Then from that problem, bioavailability F is equal to formula is the small f 1 minus ER. That is the fraction is the 40 percent. Percent that is the 40 by 100. That is the fraction absorbed from the gut into 1 minus 0.6. 1 minus 0.6, that is 40 by 100 into 0 0.4. 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 is equal to 0.16. This is the bioavailability, 0.16. Then definition of the, what is the bioavailability? 
biology is defined as the amount of percentage of an active drug, amount of percent of an active drug that is absorbed from a given dosage, absorbed from a given dosage form, following its non-vascular administration and reaches the systemic circulation that is to be available at the desired site of action. It's important. That is available at the desired site of action. You see when the biology, when the drug is given intravenously, the bioavailability is 100%. It will be 100%. This is the definition of the bioavailability. Okay. Next problem. <clears throat> the ninth problem. Ninth problem. Two hundred milligrams loading dose of a drug. Two hundred milligrams loading dose of a drug is needed. To provide it with a plasma level of 4 milligrams per liter. The questions were okay, what is the volume of distribution of the drug? What is the volume of distribution of the drug? B question give examples of two drugs where loading dose is essential in two conditions. This is about the question about the volume of distribution. Before question was by about the bioavailability. This is the volume of distribution. Okay. Move on to the answer. You see this volume of distribution represented by capital L. That is, is equal to total amount administered by plasma concentration. That is the 200 milligrams total admission that is the loading dose by four plasma concentration is 4 milligrams per liter that is the total volume of distribution 50 liters then what is the loading dose or priming dose it is the large dose of drug to be given initially provide the effective plasma concentration rapidly this is about the definition for loading dose or priming dose The three half lives are needed to reach the steady state plasma conduction of a drug. So, several days would be wasted in obtaining the derived therapeutic effect. So, it takes a long time for the therapeutic to get the therapeutic effect. The B question, loading dose is essential in case of a clinical emergency like clinical emergency like examples are in conditions like congestion heart failure with atrial fibrillation where desoxin is to be used. And one more example, hyperperexia is due to malaria where chloroquine is to be used in an emergency. Delay is bound to be fatal for the patient in such cases and hence initial loading dose is given to reduce the time needed to reach the steady state plasma concentration. Then the loading dose is then followed by a maintenance dose to maintain the already steady state plasma concentration. <clears throat> One more example, in ventricular tachycardia, a loading dose of 100 milligrams of lidocaine is given. <clears throat> These are all the three examples in congestive heart failure, in malaria, and also ventricular tachycardia. These are the drugs useful. Okay. Then one more 10th problem. In chart, a patient with high intracranial tension 
was brought to the hospital. The doctor wanted to examine the internal ocular structures. The question was, hey, which is that you use as a metriatic for fundoscopic examination of the eye? Which is that you use it for as metriatic for fundoscopic examination of the eye? It is patient with eye intraocular tension. Okay. Answer is the for ophthalmic or fundoscopic examination of the retina is greatly facilitated by midriasis. For this acute measurement, in fact, where needs ciliary paralysis. Therefore, anti-muscular drugs administered topically as eye drops are extremely useful in doing a complete eye examination. So instead of atropine, atropine substitutes like semi-synthetic or synthetic substitute like tropicamide. Tropicamide or you atropine or cyclopentolate are now preferred for the purpose as the duration of action is shorter and also side effects are minimal. That is a lesser risk of respiratory glaucoma. Instead of atropine, the other drugs are that substitutes like tropicamide, eucatropin, or cyclopentolate. But there is a lesser risk of respiratory glaucoma. The anti muscular drugs are preferred when mediasis along with cyclopegia is required. One more condition, in a patient suffering from glaucoma, the best choice for fundoscopic examination is specific alpha adrenoceptor agonist, like alpha adrenoceptor agonist, when patient suffering with glaucoma, this is important. The patient suffering with glaucoma, for fundoscopic examination, alpha adrenoceptor agonist, like phenylephrine, which produces short-lasting mediasis without any effect on intraocular pressure. That is phenylephrine. You should remember tropicamide, eucatropin, cyclopentolate, and for glaucoma patients, phenylephrine. Then, 11th question, 11th problem. An alcohol addict received an anti amoebic drug. He lost all his inhibitions and developed. Objectional behavior. Objectionable behavior. An alcohol addict received an anti amoebic drug. He lost all his inhibitions and developed objectional behavior. The questions were he mentioned the probable drug he has received and also explain its mode of action. Mention the probable drug he has received and explain its mode of action. The answer is the A. The probable drug is metronidazole, anti MAB drug, metronidazole. If this drug is taken along with alcoholic beverages, that is alcohol, it produces disulfiram type of reaction, disulfiram type of reaction. This is caused by inhibition of aldehyde dehydrogenase and blockade of oxidation of acetaldehyde. Thus raising the levels of toxic acetaldehyde, toxic acetaldehyde that leads to nausea, vomiting, dizziness, the cell from reaction is anti abuse, dizziness, headache, dyspnea, weakness, vertigo, blurred vision, 
confusion and syncope. These are all the symptoms constitute the syndrome like Haldeide syndrome. This materials are in large doses. It can lead to congestive heart failure, arrhythmias, respiratory depression, convulsions, and even death of the patient in large doses. Like metrazole, the other drugs having similar effect are in Viva they will ask what are the other drugs other than metrazole. That is the similar effect having sulfonylureas, that is chlorpromomate, which is not using now, sulfonylureas like chlorpromomate, used in the, as an anti diabetic. Then cephalosporins, that is C4 pyrazole. In Viva they will ask what are the other drugs causing. Disulfiram reactions. That is cephalosporins, C4 pyrazole. C4 pyrazole. Then, 12th question. This following prescription was given to a patient with exaggeration of bronchial asthma. Exaggeration of bronchial asthma. The tablet is theophylline, salbutamol inhaler 2 puffs, 100 mg TID, then tablet ciprofloxin, 500 mg TID, then one more anti acid gel, 3 spoons TID. This is given for the bronchial asthma. The question is a comment on the above drug combination. Comment on the above drug combination. The answers, okay, it's a serious medical emergency requiring urgent hospitalization and emergency treatment. The initial treatment is the for severe dyspnea, exhaustion, cyanosis, and dehydration. You have to give correct this condition by giving oxygenation. 3 to 5 liters per minute. You have to give artificial oxygen. Then you have to correct the dehydration with 5% glucose and normal saline. This is the emergency condition. We have to do. First, we have to initially we have to control the supportive measures. Dehydration and we have to give the airway oxygenation 3 to 5 liters. Then we have to give humidified oxygen, 5 to 60 percent by 20 mask. Then nebulization by salbutamol and one more iplatropium bromide. Nebulize salbutamol and iplatropium bromide. Then steroids, intravenous hydrocortisone, 100 milligrams every four hours to six hours. The cytochrome increases the permissive activity of beta 2 agonist, that is the iplatromepromine. The drugs are salbutamol, iplatromepromine, then steroid, hydro hydrocortisone. Since if there is a poor response within one hour of the above treatment, then we have to hospitalize, hospitalize the patient, we have to correct the dehydration and acidosis, repeat and embrace salbutamol every 30 minutes, and repeat and embrace iplatromepromine. 0.5 mg every 6 hourly. Then we have, if, if, if we again needed, we have to add the intravenous amylophilin infusion. When we give the intravenous amylophilin, we have to monitor the serum potassium and oxygen saturation. And also we can give antibiotics if any lung infection. Correction of acidosis by slow intravenous sodium bicarbonate. Since it is a chronic form of asthma, instead of giving oral theophylline, we can give intravenous theophylline or aminophilin. can be given slowly. This is the treatment part of the 
excessive bronchial asthma. First, we have to maintain oxygen, correct to dehydration. Then we have to give salbutamol, ipratolol bromide, and intravenous hydrocortisones. If the patient is not responded with this, then we have to, to hospitalize the patient. Then again, correct the dehydration, acidosis, and we have to add the intravenous immunophilin infusion. Okay, the treatment of the chronic bronchial asthma. And 13th question. 13th problem. A patient with schizophrenia was advised to take clopromazine, 100 mg tablet, thrice a day. Within four weeks, he became all right. But complained of muscular rigidity, tremors, and echinacea. Questions were, what is the probable diagnosis? What is the further management? See question mentioned some other drugs causing Parkinsonism. Okay. The answers were, It could be an extra perimeter syndrome like Parkinsonism. Caused due to drugs, phenothiazine group like phenothiazine group like clopromazine and metaclopromine. That is anti-emitting. Metaclopromine. These drugs cause the extra perimeter reaction causing Parkinsonism. The other drug is the Central acting anticholinergic like benzexol. Benzexol 2 to 10 milligrams per day. Then benzotropin, the other drugs, benzotropin, procyclidine, bipyridine, or antihistamines like with high anticholinergic side effects like diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine, useful in the as a binary capsule or injection promethazine, that is the injection phenargon should be given to correct this condition. Benzoxone, benzotropin, procyclidine, bipyridine or antihistamines like diphenhydramine or injection promethazine. Where in the market, injection phenargon. See answer in this case, the other antihistamines which with less extra perimeter side effects should be started. The less side effect drug is the example is the olanzapine. Now it is more available in the market. Many this is the more useful for this condition olanzapine. If chlorpromazine has to be continued, then add central anticholinergic with this treatment, that is central antibiotic is a benjaxol or procyclidine or bipyridine. Okay, the latest drug is the olanzapine having the less side effect, that is extra perimeter side effect, olanzapine. Okay, this completes the clinical problems, that is total is the 13 clinical problems. So we will Intimate the date, then you have to submit the records, practical records. Okay? Thank you.